Imagine a completely dark night sky. This is what ancient civilizations evolved with. This guided their lifestyles and their village layouts. It steered them across oceans, and it even gave them spiritual guidance. The night sky wasn't just interesting to people back then. It was necessary for scientific growth. It's only been in the last 100 years or so that we've begun to disconnect ourselves from this ancestry. We've begun flooding light up into the night sky, all with this false sense of technological achievement. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, where I never got to know the night sky. I always had this fascination with astronomy, but there was never any way to really explore that curiosity. It wasn't until later in life I was learning nature photography, and I visited Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where I saw my first grizzly bears, and I saw my first truly dark night sky, and I knew right away that was home. After moving up, I became inspired to do more night photography, to experiment with that. But I noticed that every time I pointed my camera back toward Jackson, there was this glow coming from town. I mean, I had grown up with lights at night. Everybody I'd known had. That's just the way it was, right? We need all this light. But something about it still seemed unnatural. And I looked more into it. And what I realized and what I found out is that all this excess lighting is actually having a very negative effect on humans, both individually and as a species. For starters, crime is actually higher with more light. Now, how does that make any sense? We have spotlights everywhere. They're shining everywhere. We have our night sky lit up as bright as day. I mean, that takes a lot of work. So how does that happen? Well, imagine you're driving down the road into the sun, and all you can see is the glare from the sun. So you flip the visor down, and right away, everything is much clearer and easier to see. The same concept applies to shielded lighting. When you put a shield over the light, you block out the bulb, and this gets rid of the glare. This leaves criminals with fewer places to hide because there's so much more visibility. And likewise, with a darker location, criminals are less certain of escape. Of course, this all sounds like wishful thinking, too good to be true. But Bristol, UK, put it to the test. They started turning off their lights after midnight. And within a couple of years, they noticed a 20% drop in crime. A nearby neighborhood started doing the exact same thing. They saw crime drop by 50%. And all they did was turn out the lights. All this excess lighting is taking its toll on human health as well. We're a species that evolved with a natural cycle of daytime to nighttime. It's always been that way. This is our circadian rhythm. When we're exposed to a cell phone or a TV screen or a computer screen when we're staying up late, or when light trespasses into our bedroom at night, our body suppresses the production of a hormone called melatonin. And melatonin has been shown in studies to actually decrease the risk of breast and prostate cancer. And this is because our body's immune system is most active from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. as long as light isn't hitting our eyes. In fact, the World Health Organization they got a hold of this information, they looked into it, and they rated working the night shift just as dangerous as breathing in diesel fumes. All this excess lighting affects the natural world's health around us as well. Insects are drawn to these big bright lights that we have everywhere, and they congregate in huge numbers, where the vast majority of them wind up dying, not from predation, but from dehydration. But of course, these are just bugs. They're everywhere. I mean, they're on the front of my car, so who cares? Well, birds and bats are attracted to these higher congregation of insects, and they go there to feed. But all these lights that we have everywhere, they throw off their navigation systems because historically, the brightest objects in the night sky were the stars and the moon. And so when they reach these urban areas or lit areas, they wind up crashing into buildings. Migratory birds have the same problem because they do most of their migrating at night. In fact, in 2011, a flock of grebes was flying over St. George, Utah. They saw a parking lot. In their mind, it was, a, it was a pond reflecting moonlight. So they went down to rest for a little while. But 1,500 of them died as they crashed into the pavement. And mass downings and collisions like this happen so frequently that the death toll from birds 
just from light polluted related incidents is estimated to be as high as one billion every year. And these are just the smaller members of the food pyramid of the animal kingdom. This trickles all the way back up to humans. E.O. Wilson, a famous naturalist, said that if humans were to disappear from the face of the earth, it wouldn't be long before another top predator took their place. Not much would change. But if insects disappeared, who creates a foundation for this entire food pyramid, then the entire world would collapse into a state of chaos. So in making our ecosystems less safe, in damaging our own health, and in making our streets less safe, we're spending over $2 billion every single year in wasted excess lighting. And this is just in the United States. It's not including Europe or India or Asia. We're a species that grew up watching the night sky. And I recently realized what it is that fascinates every single human when they see you know, a night sky, a real, a good dark night sky. When a star reaches the end of its life, it explodes and it shoots out all the elements it's built up into its lifetime out into the space around it. Gradually, patiently, gravity brings all these elements back together to form new stars. They form new solar systems and new planets just like our own Earth. Every single thing on planet Earth is made from recycled stardust. So when we look up at a night sky, we're not just looking at some interesting object. We're looking at a cosmic mirror. It's a piece of our ancestry. It's a unique view of ourselves that we can't get anywhere else. It can't be duplicated in any way. It's our only window into this ancient past. It's our only present perspective for where we belong in this universe. And it's an essential view for future scientific growth. So the less we're able to perceive of our dark night skies, the more we lose this personal and ancestral connection to the universe. And it's for all these reasons that we're required to take much better care of our dark night skies than we have been. So I challenge each of you to just start turning off your lights. Thank you. <laughs>